first step, what does it say? Student determines the amount to be placed in the syringe. That is pretty much what we're going to do. So we're going to determine the amount in the syringe. Now, the thing is, is that the doctor will probably, like the doctor is going to give us that order. Whether or not the doctor says, hey, I need 50 milligrams of this medication or I need five cc's of this medication. The doctor is going to provide that order for us. And then you can see on the bottle, it'll tell you if, he sa if the doctor says how many milligrams of a medication you need. It tells you on the bottle how many milligrams per milliliter there are. So if, he's, if the doctor says, hey, I need 50 milligrams, you can say, hey, I need that. 25 milliliters because 50 divided by the 2 would give you the 25. So step 2 is the student selects the proper size syringe. The differences that you see in those syringes, right? So I can select that proper size. Common syringes you're going to have in a clinic are going to be your 1 mil, 3 mil, 6 mil, 12. You can even have a 60 mil syringe. So this would be good if you're giving charcoal to an animal or if you need to give subcutaneous fluids, but you're giving like a 40, 50 amount, then I don't need to pull from a whole bag. I can do this way. Or if you guys are going to go into exotics, if you're going to give like a rabbit fluids, you might use just the syringe to administer the fluids that way. Or if you're doing critical care feeding and you need to feed orally, I might use that 60 cc syringe. Step three is the student inserts the syringe into the top of the bottle. All right, now we're going to have a needle on the syringe, right? So do you want to say insert needle or insert syringe? Insert needle? Cool. That seems to be the consensus. It's kind of awesome. All right, so then step three, you're going to insert that needle. The important piece here is that you need to go straight in. So when I have, I have my bottle right? I'm going to go straight in. So that needle is going to go straight up and down. Boom. So go ahead and practice that. Take your, you're going to index finger and thumb, right? And then I'm going to go thump right in the center. So thump right in the center. Thump up and down into the center. And when we do this, your plunger is going to be all the way in because we don't want any pressure. Like we don't want any randomness with the vacuum. All right. So that's that. Step four. The student places the bottle upside down in one hand and holds securely. So we're going to make sure that we flip that vial directly upside down without removing the needle. Now, once we have the needle in, it becomes much easier to do so. So I'm going to have that straight in, right? And then I can do a few different things on moving it and rotating it up. For this, I'm actually gonna show you how to do it without the needle in it first, cause it's gonna be more difficult, which means when you actually get the needle, it'll be a lot easier. Cool. So we're gonna use our plunger as the access. So you know how like I can rotate things and they rotate on an access, axis, sorry. So I am going to lightly hold it. I'm going to allow that syringe to move. See how I'm like, I'm not, I have a lighter grip on it than I did when I first inserted it. So now when I move it, whoop, whoop, the syringe is moving like a pendulum. So that's how I'm moving it. I'm allowing that syringe to move. The bottle is pretty stable. Yeah, like my hand rotates on my bottle and comes up on an angle. Cool. What ends up happening is you do this all at once. So you just go boom, boom. And it's like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Right, how did you do that? Um, you eventually, once you get up here, then I can change how my hand is on the bottle. This is why we do everything one-handed, right? One hand has to support the syringe, the other hand is supporting something else, whether it be the bottle or the animal, cool? All right, now when I hold, I hold, my palm is where my syringe is at, and then my index finger and thumb are holding the bottle, 
these other fingers that I'm not really using, I can use those to hold the syringe now. Okay, so go ahead and try that. So pretend, thump, go in, straight up and down, and then flip over. And I want a straight flip up and down. Once you get it up and down, then rearrange that position to where you're holding and resting that syringe on your palm. So think of the center of gravity, yeah? You want everything as close to your hand as possible because then that's gonna provide you stability. That's gonna make sure that if somebody like scares you because the dog got loose and then it's running in the room with you, that you don't just drop the bottle, that you hold on to it. Now, what do you need to make sure of once you flip it upside down and you've secured the bottle? Where does your syringe need to be? Or what do I need to see on my syringe once I flip it? The tick marks, <laughs> right? So if I'm like this and I try to draw up medication, that ain't gonna help me worth nothing. I'd be like, uh. All right, so you can either start over or you can rotate that syringe while it's inverted. But again, I need to make sure I'm straight up and down because what happens when I start to go sideways? I might bend the needle. What else happens? I could break the needle, absolutely. I won't get any, the water, the liquid? Yeah, so if I'm on an angle, my needle's not necessarily gonna be in that liquid anymore. And I wanna work smarter, not harder, and I want gravity to work for me, right? So if I'm straight up and down, gravity just wants to go in. Yeah? All right. Five, the student withdraws the proper volume. So cool, I'm, I'm in accordance, like I'm all about this. So it's up and down. I'm gonna withdraw the proper volume. Okay. I'm gonna change it slightly. So we are going to draw up. Desired amount or the proper volume. Plus some. Okay. Draw up desired amount plus some. You guys have all seen those TV shows, right? What do they do on the TV shows? when they have like medicine and liquid and syringes, especially on cartoons. I feel like this happens on the cartoons all the time. They squirt a little bit out. If I put in my vial and I draw the proper amount, now I squirt in it out, do I have how much I need anymore? No. <laughs> I don't know why I knew that then, right? So I don't wanna do that. So I wanna make sure, and that's why I'm gonna draw up a little bit more than I have to. So I'm gonna, ooh. I'm gonna drop more than I need, okay? Now, do you think I'm gonna really pull that out though and waste good medication? Because that's money. Who know? And that could also, not even is it money, but if I'm drawing up a medication that is going to numb something and I just shoot it out and I'm like you're next to me and it gets on your skin, you get to go home for the rest of the day because you're not gonna feel your arm. And like, hopefully that's the only thing that happens, yeah? So I'm not just gonna willy-nilly spray medication everywhere. All right, so I draw up what I want. Give me a number between zero and one. 0.5, okay, so I'm gonna draw up 0.5. All right, so I'm gonna drop more than I want. What do I have in my syringe? Air, okay, so. So the sixth step is the student removes the syringe from the bottle, but if I have an air bubble in it, I can't remove it quite yet. The seventh step is the student gently taps or snaps the edge of the syringe to remove any air bubbles or slightly expel the air by pushing at the end of the plunger. Okay, so I am not removing this yet because I want to get rid of my air bubble. Because so I drew up like here's five, here's 0.5, but I still have air in here. So do I really have 0.5 of my medication? No, I really don't because I have 0.4 medication and 0.1 air. That's not what I'm trying to administer. The cool thing with this, because everything is vacuumed and everything is sterile and I haven't touched anything with my own real hands, whatever I draw out of my bottle and goes into my syringe is really still a part of my bottle. So if I pull and I take out as much of this volume as I want to, I can flick and you can hear it, right? Like I'm hurting my finger right now. It's okay, I'm, I'm, I'm an adult, I can handle it. 
Like you guys can handle it. I'm not going to bruise or really like hurt myself, but it's forceful. I'm not like, okay. So I'm going to get all those air bubbles out. Once I do, I can push that back now to my desired amount. Do I have any air bubbles left? Because my contents of my syringe came from the bottle and I never removed anything, I can pull more than I need and I can push the rest back into that bottle. So now I'm not going to be a cartoon character and squirt out all my medication everywhere, right? I'm actually going to be able to give the accurate dose. So now I flicked, I got my air bubbles out. So I drew up more than I needed just to make sure I could get my air bubbles out. Also, aside from flicking, what you can do, uh, think about when you have a straw, or like you have that ice cube that's stuck. Yeah, like you flick at it really hard, but then you can also use the straw to get at it, or the slushy that has like the ice on the sides of the cup. Yeah, so if you shake it, how many of you guys will do that with your slushy to like tap it all to the bottom? So that's kind of what I'm going to do here. So what I can do is I can pull really fast. And if you see that, it causes that like flow, right? I increase the pressure. So it's going to move the air on the side of the walls. And if I push it up really fast, it should jostle. So I can kind of shake if the tapping isn't working or if I have that bubble that just refuses to move beans okay so step eight is the student places syringe in the sharps container after I get how much I want and you guys will notice the needle is going past the liquid so all I'm doing is pulling that down okay once I have what I want my 0.5 if I pull straight out right now my bottle there's a chance that medicine can go where out of it right so I'm gonna flip it back over then I'm going to remove. Cool. So that's how we kind of change those last few steps. So let's get that down. So after we drew up plus some, then what did we do? Yep. Then I removed my air bubble. All right. So I'm going to remove the air bubbles. So I can flick. While I'm flicking, you guys may have noticed that I used my pinky and my ring finger, right? I was holding my syringe, but then I'm also holding that. So that way when I flick, I don't flick the needle out and stab myself because that would be bad. And then what else did we say was another tip or trick? In removing those air bubbles I can move that plunger really up and down really quickly perfect okay. what do I need to do before I pull it out Flip it. Uh, plunger. I need to flip it. And then after I remove the air bubbles, what do I need to make sure I have, though, before I can even flip it? The desired amount. Yep. So I'm going to make sure that I have that desired amount. Now I can do what? Yep, now I can return the vial right side up. Is removing needle part of that same thing? So I'm going to return the vial up right side up and remove needle, or are those two separate steps? Same step? Same step. Okay, return vial right side up and remove 
Mira. Okay. So that's the steps. 